I promised myself that I wasn't going to be mad, okay? So this is going to be calm and reflective. In fact, it's actually worse. I thought it was bad. I thought I gave the worst news, but now that Bloomberg has dropped out, that means that's 300, 200 his delegates now goes to Joe. I believe they're free to vote however they want to, but if their candidate endorses the other candidate, I would say, you know, I would think that the delegate probably would feel compelled to vote for the person, you know, that their candidate had endorsed. But they're free to vote for anybody. So actually, you know, Pete and Amy's delegates are up for grabs, I believe. I believe. But it's worse. So Bloomberg is out. Pete is out. Amy is out. All these neoliberals are dropping out. It's almost as if somebody did the math, saw that Bernie had a plurality, and if all the other neoliberals just, you know, grouped together and coalesced behind one candidate then they would actually have a fighting chance. Now, they have reversed. He's the front runner. Bernie is the underdog. Bernie got beat. Bernie got beat bad. And so, since Joe is the front runner, we can deny Joe a plurality and broker this convention. I say shoot for the broker convention because they keep threatening the damn thing. It's good for ratings. It's good for the Democratic Party to have these conversations. And people want to say drop out, but I'm not for sure if having your allies drop out. I think that every progressive vote that we get is a good thing. So getting Liz Warren, Tulsi, to some ex extent, Bernie, this is a better conversation. Joe is the only neoliberal left. Tulsi has, you know, some right-wing ideas, but Bernie, Liz, Tulsi, and Joe Biden, this is the debate. This is a better narrative. This is a better national narrative for America. So there's several things I want to talk about. I want to correct the record. Kyle Kalinske is going to sit there and say that Joe Biden has dementia. Oh, that's what they, we know said about Hillary. She had all these health problems. So, you know, she was going to not survive the presidency. They're old. They're old. So is Bernie, right? But saying he's got dementia, I mean, it's possible, right? But I think they're just kind of saying he's, you know, gas prone. Well, the reason why Joe Biden is gas prone is because he's a neoliberal right-wing piece of shit. So I don't think you should lead off with dementia. I think you should point out that he can't keep his goddamn hands to himself. So that's the first thing. Lead off with him being a pervert. And Joe Biden is a right-wing neoliberal. He's a, Just hit him on the policies. And hit him hard on the policies. So the reason why he gaffs so much is because he's a right-wing neoliberal. So when he's trying to explain to the Democratic base, the so-called progressive base, why people should vote for him, he gets all, you know, in a hyper, and he gets all the, hey, this is, we're the ones that, no, we, don't, we pulled, the, you know, yeah, I voted for the Iraq War, but we pulled the troops, the combat troops out of Iraq. And so it's an old man trying to parallel park his thoughts. It's not dementia, it's him trying to, you know, get the finger on the pulse of America. He's excited. He's yelling. He looks like he's confident. He's mad. And he's like, no, I'm the one that did that. I did this and I did that. He's got a problem with lying. He's got a mate that his first campaign, I want to say in the 80s or something, he got caught basically plagiarizing other people's speeches. And then he dropped out. So, you know, he was caught literally lying literally copying other people's ideas, and no, no, uh, that's, so he pulled a Melania. <laughs> so Joe Biden sucks. If that's the establishment wants to go behind Joe Biden, I, you know, I'm with, uh, you know, C Crystal Ball and, um, and Jetty, that Sa Sagar and Jetty guy. I'm with them, too, because bring it on. Bring it the fuck on. I, I would have been okay with taking on Bloomberg. I would have been okay with taking on Biden, taking on Klobacher. Jesus, wouldn't that have been a nice gift? <laughs> Pete Buttigieg, I actually thought, was the toughest candidate because Pete Buttigieg has some progressive ideas, lots of progressive ideas. Read his website. But he didn't, you know, highlight those things, and he's running to the right. So, you know, fuck Pete. But in terms of comparing and contrasting, Joe is not the, you know, toughest candidate to beat. I think he's one of the easiest ones to beat. So when Kyle Kalinske did, and everybody to knock it off with that dementia shit, you're lying you have dementia. You think he's got dementia, then you have dementia. Okay? You're going to lie and get people to believe this health problem bullshit. Point out his policies. Bankruptcy bill, the Patriot Act, DOMA, Iraq War, a ton of fucking things. Busing, segregation, you know, civil rights. All of his record is terrible. He's a war hawk. Look at Libya. Look at drone strikes. Deporter in chief. Look at Obama's policy. You know, they put the pros and the cons. 
it wasn't all hunky dory. There was not change. We didn't get the change that you know we were promised. So knock it off with the dementia, okay? Kyle Kalinsky and whoever the fuck a uh, progressive voice guy. So yeah, so knock it off with the dementia. Now, what the fuck happened? Let's explain what the fuck happened, right? Bernie, you know, tied for, you know, essentially Iowa, probably won. Now that Pete's out, then Bernie basically took the thing, right? But I think delegate counts says that Joe won Iowa. So, oh, isn't that weird how precarious elections are? So, you know, don't forget Bloomberg skipped the first four elections, but still won 200 delegates. So that's, you know, nothing to shake a stick at. If I saw, you know, somebody won 200 delegates, I'm not going to shake a stick at somebody winning 200 delegates, and you shouldn't shake a stick at them either. So, South Carolina, what the fuck happened? The Empire struck back. The Empire struck back. This was a massacre. This is Bernie's second heart, heart attack. This is a Super Tuesday massacre. This is the aftermath of a nuclear winter. Bernie Sanders is basically on death row right now. This is the apocalypse, the end of days. This is a, an Iraqi genocide. Just a scorched earth George Washington genocide of the Iroquois. Just an absolute Saudi Arabian Yemeni genocide. Just a just a, you know a Myanmar genocide, an Armenian genocide, Native American genocide, just massive genocide. There's it's a World War One poison gas, trench warfare, like a side chemical attack, Al Qaeda and ISIS. And then who the hell are those people in Africa? Whoever those kings, the Lord's army, the king's army. Fucking ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and then those African terrorists. You know, this is just basically like the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand by Gavrilo Prince Seep. So, I gotta correct the record on a bunch of stuff, but this was terrible. This was awful. Bernie Sanders got his ass kicked. He's barely surviving. He's, you know, he's bloodied. His eyes are blackened. He could barely even crawl. You know, who knows if he even has the stuffing in him to keep on going. Uh, we'll, we might have to prop, you know, him up. Just like Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar propped the dead candidacy of Joe Biden up. Hey, look, no, Joe Biden's actually electable. No, Joe's viable. Oh, yeah, we see a neoliberal establishment. I heard that Obama had organized all this. So what happened is Bernie had the momentum, went in Iowa, went in New Hampshire, went in Nevada. You know, everybody is excited. We didn't ca capture Nevada. The neoliberals struck when the iron was hot. Joe Biden won South Carolina. Everybody knew it was going to happen. So they were planning when Joe wins South Carolina, we, you know, whoop and holler and just, you know, create a big ruckus like it's a big deal ever. Get Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar to drop out and then endorse Joe Biden, which helped in Minnesota and maybe helped in, you know, other places. So you had Barack Obama or some neoliberal of the donors behind the scenes say, hey, Pete and Amy, you need to drop out. Offer them some quid pro quo deal. So what the fuck did Pete and Buttigieg, you know, Pete and Buttigieg and Amy and Klobacher, what did all those people, <laughs> what did they give up? They sold the American people out there fighting against uh, the revolution. And so what was that deal? Donald Trump says that they should be impeached, right? They should impeach. It's quid pro quo. What kind of deal? Pete and Amy, you know, sold out the American people. It is trench warfare. Jink Ugar has got the narrative correct. It is trench warfare. So we're going to have to buckle down, and it's. I think it's going to come up to the, the next contest. I think the next contest is a week from now, and there's like four states or five or six. So Bernie has to win that. He has to win that next one because he's either 85 plus Bloomberg, 300 delegates down. Bernie Sanders is 300 delegates down, and there's 2,500 delegates left, which means it's, you know, still possible, but I held on to the possibility of him winning, you know, forever, four years ago, so I'm not going to make the same mistake again. When it's over, it's over. I'm going to call it. But 300 delegates down, 2,500 left. He can win if he shows and gets that momentum back. And now that it's just Joe and just Bernie, we can make the case that Joe sucks and Bernie is awesome. So it's, you know, crystal clear who the two main candidates are. Diverger's law, it's going to be Bernie 
or Joe between, you know, in the Democratic primary. Let Liz and Tulsi and, um, I guess that's it, Liz Warren and Tulsi, let them do their thing. I ain't tripping out about that. I partially think that their votes, you know, their delegates are going to go to Bernie anyways. So it's Biden versus Bernie. It's Biden versus Bernie. So they did good by striking when the iron was hot. Joe Biden won South Carolina. Then, bam, you know, what a superhero. Then Pete Buttigieg, Jamie Kohlbacher, drop out, endorsed. Joe Biden, make a big speech. Look at this. And then Beto O'Rourke comes in. Oh, my God. People are just losing their shit. They're losing their goddamn minds. The corporate media is just, you know, eating all this shit up and then you know, spewing all this bullshit. Barack Obama told Joe Biden, this is all, you know, rumors and speculation, but this is makes sense. The empire struck back, so it's either the donor class or Barack Obama was actually behind it. Remember, he says that people are too woke, too revolutionary, too, so we need to, what, be like Hillary? Barack Obama told Joe Biden that an endorsement could actually backfire, so Barack Obama doesn't want to endorse Joe Biden, at least that's what he's telling him, because it could backfire. God, you know, I was, you know, right now, Donald Trump's in there. People hate me right now. So endorsing you, you might lose some of those conservative Democrats and those conservative suburbanites. And so Obama tells Joe Biden it could backfire. I don't think it could. I think Obama actually has a, you know, fantastic reputation. Now, a Hillary Clinton endorsement would backfire. A David Duke endorsement would backfire. A Donald Trump endorsement would backfire. But a Barack Obama endorsement for whatever reason, he's not endorsing Joe Biden, and maybe he's just, you know, not going to endorse until the very end to try to bring everybody back or some shit. I don't know. But Marianne Williamson is correct. This was, you know, a slaughter fest, an absolute massacre, and it happened intentionally. The establishment got their shit together, got in line, got coordinated, got mobilized, and you just witnessed the coup d'etat against the revolution. So the revolution... What kind of people would fight against a revolution that helps the sick, that helps the poor, that helps the working class, that helps the students, that helps small businesses and small farms and the little, regular, average American? Who else? What other honest man is there in government? Who the fuck else is going to fight for the working class in Washington, D.C.? If we don't have Bernie Sanders... Maybe he could run as an independent. He won't do that. So then we got the Green Party. We have nothing. Without Bernie Sanders, we have we could have given a gift, a wonderful brand, you know, awesome gift, an FDR. Here's an FDR Eisenhower to get us back into the middle of the road. But instead, that's not, you know, what's going to happen. So bypass the DNC. They, you got Tossy, Liz, Bernie, and Joe. If they don't allow Tulsi on the stage, they need to show some solidarity. Elizabeth had said you want to strike some point in time about some sort of question to Andrew Yang, you know, admit your faults or some shit. You want to strike and go against this question. Why don't you strike and actually be for a fair debate? There's only four candidates. They can establish their own debate and have two or three or four of them. Like I said, the conversation between Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders Tossie Gabbard and Elizabeth Warren is a much better conversation than just one or two progressives and a bunch of fucking right-wing neoliberal assholes. The heart of the Democratic Party is between the neoliberals and the progressives. And if the Democratic Party doesn't embrace the progressive base, the progressive base should not keep on taking the abuse of being, uh, you know, ignored. And the Democratic Party has nothing but contempt for the progressive base which is fucking bullshit. Donald Trump embraces his base. Bernie Sanders embraces his base. We need a left-wing, liberal, progressive opposition candidate who actually represents something different. Of course, you know, the Republican light strategy of the Clinton years is over, dead, and gone with. We are in a, you know, post-modern or post-truth era with Donald Trump. This is insanity. We need to get back to sanity. So, uh, real quick, McGovern, he was very defensive. He kept on running to the right. I think we should, as Bernie, you know, Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders supporters, we should defend all of his policies. We should defend socialism, defend that Castro had a literacy program. All these things are true. We should just overdose on truth and reason and logic. Just 
overdose on just as much as we can reason, truth, and logic, and reason, and truth, and logic. Socialism means Bernie Sanders gives a shit about the working class. Socialism means Bernie Sanders is thinking about the economics of the American people. That's great. This is fantastic. Socialism is the reason why you had 50 revolutions, at least, attempted in 1848, the same year the Communist Manifesto was written. So Communist Manifesto was written in 1848. Now you got an occupied Europe, occupy the world. you got an uh, Arab Spring that happened all over the world, even in Colombia and Latin America over here. So France, Germany, all these revolutions happened after the Communist Manifesto was written. So socialism is popular. Don't run away from any of these issues. Don't try to appeal to any of these right-wing assholes. We're trying to build a brand new political realignment. That means brand new voters, young people, and people that don't vote. We've got to bring them back into the system. But trying to appeal to the moderate Republicans is, you know, running the establishment candidate, running the neoliberal, which lost in 2016, and it's going to lose again. So it's a stupid record. It's dumb. What the fuck are they even thinking? Jesus Christ, Joe's your man, huh? You're going to win the whole world back with Joe. So it is the Empire Strikes Back. Barack Obama's the Empire drone strike, 150 uh, military bases all the world, 70 countries. We got the war on terror. He didn't end the war in Iraq or Afghanistan. What the fuck did he we were, That's why we voted that bastard in there. He didn't, you know, end poverty, legalize marijuana, end homelessness. We didn't get more freedom. What the fuck changed under Barack Obama? What the fuck changed? He said he ran the presidency like a Republican. So he admitted that he was a right-wing neoliberal. So the Empire did strike back, but if you know anything about the Star Wars movie, the first one is a new hope, right? Luke Skywalker's brand new hope, and then the Empire strikes back. Darth Vader, you know, strikes back. And then the third movie is the Return of the Jedi. And those are the only three Star Wars movies that matter. There's all that other shit. I don't even know what the fuck that... Jar Jar Binks? That's, that's what you think? You call that good cinema? <laughs> So it's now time for the return of the Jedi. So I think by understanding that we're in an uphill battle, that it's totally dependent. Bernie has to win every single one of these elections. Maybe one or two he can lose, but he, you know, get five points, get ten points, get twenty points. But he's got to get that momentum back. So he's got to win these next round of elections in one week. I think there's going to be a debate, and I think that you're going to have four or five states in a week. So it's right around the corner. And if they keep this shit up, you know, maybe he could probably take it all the way to the July convention. I think Bernie's got it in him to, you know, run the gauntlet, to take it all the way to the end. To not be a fucking whip like Kamala Harris and Andrew Yang and who the fuck, has, all these people that, you know, inspire so many people. Oh, yeah. In order to, all they had to do is keep their name on the ballot. People are going to shit on Tulsi. I'm glad Tulsi's in there. I'm glad Tulsi is one of the few allies that Bernie Sanders has. Tom Steyer was an ally, too. Andrew Yang was an ally. So, yeah, this is a better conversation. Um, the last points I want to make, I want to correct the record. I want to correct the record. So, first of all, Kyle Kalinske, the progressive voice, anybody else, you know, shitting on Joe Biden for dementia, that, those attacks didn't work on Hillary. So you need to tell the truth, okay? So if you think he's got dementia, I don't know. He could, you know, but I don't think it's dementia. I think it's just, you know, talking is hard, especially if you're trying to bullshit people. He's a right-wing neoliberal trying to be a progressive, so he's trying to say, hey, I'm the progressive in this race, and he's too radical, and we're going to get things done. <laughs> oh, yeah, join us to stop the revolution. Join us to make sure the sick stay sick and the homeless stay without shelter and the stranger stays deported. Join us to stop the revolution. I don't think so, Joe Biden. I'm not going to fucking join you. I'm not going to join you, fucking Joe Biden. <laughs> two big things I want to correct. The, people talk about how there's only two lanes, and this really goes to Crystal Ball and that, you know, Sagar and Jetty, they have done a great job with, uh, I think, narrating and um, giving the narrative, really capturing the public narrative uh, with, for this whole race. So, I just want them to know, I probably should just call them up and say, hey guys, you know, I think of it this way, so maybe, maybe we need to rethink how we've been, you know, talking about this. But, 
I think there's four lanes. I think in the heart of every American, there's a right winger, a left winger, and then a center right, center left. And so there's four degrees. And then there's an authoritarian thing, too. So it's more of a quadrant, right? You either got this quadrant, that quadrant, that So there's four. The heart of every American is in that political compass. And so, therefore, there's four lanes. I see a lane for Liz. I see a lane for Tulsi. I see a lane for Joe Biden. I see a lane for Bernie. They're, you know, very far, they could be dark horse candidates. So don't underestimate any of these candidates being a dark horse candidate. Also, with the convention, if it becomes a broker convention, they can nominate literally anybody. They can nominate, you know, goddamn fucking Jim, Jimmy Jones. <laughs> Not Jim Jones. But, uh, yeah, I'll talk about Jim Jones in a second. But they, you could nominate a goddamn ham sandwich and, you know, then that's, um... If they all vote for them, so they could just nominate somebody who's not even in the race, somebody who's popular, somebody who's could you know unify the the country or unify the party. So all these nominees could just be knocked out in exchange for Oprah. So that's the first thing. There's four lanes. There's not just two lanes. There's not just establishment, anti-establishment. It's all in Pueblo, Colorado. The two esta I thought it was just establishment, anti, but the two leaders. We're both establishment, so the, the establishment had so many voters, there was, you know, they were leading in the two front, you know, runners, and then the anti-establishment people were, you know, third and fourth, and so there's four lanes, there are four lanes, two establishment lanes, two anti-establishment lanes, it's a green lane, libertarian lane, center left, center right, Dems and Republicans try to, you know, appeal to the moderate, now let's talk about moderate versus liberal versus conservative, throughout all human history, People have either, you know, tried to keep things the same, conserve what has been happening, or they try to change things, and therefore they were more liberal in the policies. So they want to change things like liberals, or they want to keep things the same. And that's throughout all human history. It doesn't, it makes sense to be balanced when it comes to liberal and conservative ideas. Some things need to stay the same, some things need to change, some things you need to think with your heart, some things you need to think with your brain. Sometimes you got to think about the individual, and that's more capitalism. Sometimes you got to think about the community, and that's more socialism. And so everybody thinks that they're a moderate. Now, in the whole scale, what's that scale called? I forget, there's some sort of political scale. But in the political scale, everybody thinks that they're moderate. They think of, you know, well, shit, you got Stalin, you got Hitler, and I'm in between. And that's actually exactly where you should be. So most people think of themselves as moderates. If Bernie Sanders, he's the progressive, but he is also a radical in terms of fundamental change, but he's not a radical in terms of, you know, destroying and blowing up the system. If he doesn't get elected, you know, fuck around and find out. Fuck around and find out. <laughs> but everybody thinks that they're more moderates. So I think the best way to go forward is to attack with reason and logic, facts, and the truth. So just hit them. That's all we got anyways, really. So you have to just, you know, overdose on these things. Go above and beyond. So when it comes to socialism, defend socialism. When it comes to, you know, this is the, the primary. This is the Democratic primary. There should be a lot of fucking progressives out there. And if they're not, then, you know, get them in the Republican side and encourage three or four more people to register to vote. So what I think we need to do, you know, defend socialism, the word, the idea, and especially Bernie Sanders socialism, which is his, whatever he wants it to be. And Bernie Sanders can define it however he wants to, but he's talking about Denmark, Germany, you know, Sweden, Finland, Norway, the European countries, right, Canada. So when it comes to being a moderate and a radical and right wing, compared to Canada, compared to Europe, compared to FDR and Dwight D. Eisenhower, Bernie Sanders is a conservative. He is center right. He's center right. And that's what none of these assholes have got is that he's speaking the truth. So his words are going to, you know, live for eternity, whereas these other politicians' words will fizzle out and die tomorrow. So I think we've got to push up against how radical Bernie is. We have to point out how many other radicals there are out there. Radical is fundamental change. You can't have fundamental change. The American revolutionaries were radical, right? It was, you know, should we be ruled by Britain or have our own country? That was radical. So the Jim Jones was a radical. American revolutionaries are good, right? Jim Jones was a radical. He was a communist. And then when, you know, he didn't get his way, he just had everybody kill themselves. Well, that's pretty fucking radical. Let's just all drink the goddamn Kool-Aid, right? 
So he's not a Jim Jones. Bernie Sanders isn't even a Hunter S. Thompson of the Freak Party power up in Aspen, Colorado. He's the Confederacy, the Nazis. These are radicals. Talk about radicals. You know, do we need a Stalin to stop the Hitler? Maybe. But we need an FDR and a Stalin. We need them working together to stop a Hitler. Right? So maybe you need a far left-wing person to destroy a far right-wing person. I do know that in order to defeat a populist, you have to elect a populist. You have to elect somebody who's appealing to the people for Hillary to say that that's ridiculous. His whole campaign is baloney. Why? Because he's actually appealing to the people? She laughs at that. She's like a William Howard Taft character huh, going around and begging for votes, not us. Not we, the one percent. <laughs> Fuck that shit. So you have, you know, Jim Jones is a bitter, bigger radical. The Confederacy seceded from the Union. The Nazis wanted to kill all those, you know, Jewish people. But the Confederacy, we got Confederates still, neo-Confederates still today. Talk about radicals. So what do you want to do? Destroy America? Make us just a bunch of individual states so we're not united? You know, we're not the United States of America. So you want to be the enemies of America? You want a war against America? That's radical. That's the Confederacy. That's what the fuck they believed in defense of the 1% owning slaves. Hey, my oppressors wants to have free labor, so we're going to fight to the death. Did you choose it? Well, they forced us with the draft, but, you know, we're all racist pieces of shit anyways. Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson's a radical. And he, you know, killed Native Americans. Abraham Lincoln's a radical. George Washington had a genocide, right? Talk about radicals. MLK and Gandhi were radical extremists, but they were good radicals. Abraham Lincoln was a radical. These are good radical extremists. FDR is a good radical extremist. Jim Jones is not. Stalin is not. Andrew Jackson, the Confederacy, the Nazis, even Hunter S. Thompson, even Eugene Debs. Bernie is to the right of Eugene Debs. Bernie is to the right of Eisenhower. Bernie is to the right of all of Europe and Canada. So we can't, you know, this. we need to speak more accurate about what a moderate is. Everybody thinks they're a moderate. So if we're going to paint Bernie up as, as this radical leftist, then everybody's going to run to the right of him thinking that they're being reasonable and smart. But if we actually put the continuum of left and right, you know, Stalin and Hitler... Is it somewhere between Stalin and Hitler? Yes. We need a balance between Stalin and Hitler. And in fact, they're both authoritarian. So could, is there somebody out there that's not for state power? And Emma Goldman. So we need to have a blend of Emma Goldman. We need to have a blend of uh, Eugene Debs. And we need to have an FDR. And we need to have uh, Ronald Reagan, as much as I hate to say it. So you, there's four. There's four lanes. And when it comes to moderate, conservative, liberal, Bernie is the moderate. Bernie is the centrist. He is center-right compared to Europe. What, he wants universal health care? Guess what? Germany's had universal health care since 1883. Europe has universal health care, universal education, free college. Germany offers free college to Americans. They already have all these things. Nothing that Bernie is saying is shocking to any European or Canadian. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, you have free college, so you have an educated populace. You have free health care, so that way you have a healthy populace, have a healthy workforce, have a healthy people. Healthy and smart people is a good fucking thing if the government gives a shit about you. Uh, the Belgium King Leopold II. Let's talk about Leopold II. Belgian King goes into Congo, kills 10 million. 10 fucking million. Leopold II. We know about, you know, Hitler and all the rest of them, but... And then there's another guy, Turk something? I don't know. There's some other guy. I was looking at the top genocides of all history. But King Leopold II is up there. A Belgian king went to the Congo, treated them all like his own personal slaves, and ended up executing 10 million. 10 fucking million. So Leopold II is a bigger radical than Bernie Sanders. Jim Jones is a bigger radical. Andrew Jackson, the Confederacy, the Nazis. Joseph Stalin. And uh, yeah, Castro, all the communists, he's not a communist. He's a socialist, a democratic socialist, which I believe he probably has a blend of capitalism and socialism. He's against the billionaire class, but I bet you, I wonder what his thoughts are actually on capitalism. I would be interested in hearing his thoughts 
if he's anti-capitalism? Does he believe in the destruction? Because a true blue communist, a Marxist, Leninist communist, believes in the destruction of capitalism. Also, you know, I like Lenin. I don't like that he overtook the government by force. And Karl Marx is just an author. He's a historian. He's a newspaper man. And he lost all of his kids to poverty. So, you know, he was against poverty, come up with communism, come up with socialism, and electrified the entire world. We're still talking about Karl Marx's ideas today.